Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides, and I have a car that I remember back in high school. I used to look at a lot of car and driver magazines, road and track, and drool all over. This is the last year of the 1995 Corvette ZR1. If you don't know what a ZR1 is, let me give you a little bit of background history on it. So Corvette's been around since 1953. The first couple years, not really what I think a lot of us think of when we think of a true sports car. It was a straight six, blue flame, flame six, about 160 or so horsepower. 1955 is when finally Chevrolet decided to put a small block V8 in there and the rest is history. Now, in 1970, there was, a, actually 70, 71, there was a ZR1 Corvette. ZR1 actually stands for Zora's Racer. And if you're wondering, what is this Zora? You're talking about Zoro? No, Zora. There is a guy by the name of Zora Duntov who is considered to be the father of the Corvette because he's the man that pushed at Chevrolet to get the V8 into the Corvette. Now, fast forward from 1970-71 because they only made about 20, 25 of those. So in my eyes, that's not really a big production number. Um, and for me, 1990 and those two letters, ZR, ZR1, is where it really came together. In 1990, Chevrolet just upside down, turned everybody around with what they brought to the table. They brought a Corvette, but a Corvette like no other, a 32-valve V8. Totally different from any Corvette, because remember, Corvettes, even to this day, pushrod V8. This thing has overhead camshafts. Now, when I tell you how much horsepower this car has, it may not blow you away. In 1990, it was 375 horsepower. Eventually, they got it to ride around right over 400 horsepower. Today, it seems that a lot of cars have 400 horsepower, but back then, a standard Corvette, especially in 1990, had about 235 horsepower, so quite a difference. This thing, though, is just beautiful. I got to talk with the owner. This car is a what I like to call cream puff. Even though it's a 1995, it's got about 20 or so thousand miles. It's in original perfect condition, and he wound up finding it at a dealership in Lakeland and got one heck of a deal. But anyways, let's talk about this car. Now, first of all, you're going to see this wonderful color. This color is ultra rare, very low numbers. You know, most people, when they get their Corvettes, they like white, they like red, they like black. I'm really loving the color because with a cloudy overcast day, it looks a little bit more like a turquoise type of color. But when the sun comes out, it really pops. Check out these wheels. Now, these wheels were not what came out on the original 1990-01. Eventually, in 94 is when they went and switched up the wheel to this wonderful five-star design. I like the traditional Corvette logo there. You're always going to see the Chevy bow tie on one side of the flag and the checkered flag on the other side. And that lets you know that this is about performance. Now, when it comes to this setup, I really like this fourth generation Corvette or C4. Now, if you're wondering, what am I talking about generations? Original Corvette, 1953, went all the way to 1962. That's the first generation. Then you're going to have 63 to 67 is going to be the second generation. Third generation is going to go from that 68 all the way to 82. This generation, generation four, ran from 1984 to 1995. Now, what's interesting, or excuse me, 1996. What's interesting is that there's no 1983 Corvette. That's actually one year that they never made a Corvette because the 84 was actually introduced late in 83, and that's why they called it an 84. But there is the heart of this beast. That's a 32-valve V8 engine. I love the look of that engine. It looks just so muscular and powerful. It's got that over 400 horsepower, something that was revolutionary back then with the overhead cams. I really like the intake runners up there how they have them divvied up. It really gives it that aggressive look and it lets you know that you have something totally different. What's also nice and amazing about this generation of Corvette is look at how the hood is open. I like the way it gives you full accessibility to that engine. Also, if my camera guy, Chris, could show you, you could even get to the upper and lower control arms and the shock mount there. So it's very, very accessible, and I like that. And this is another thing that is a Corvette trademark is how the hood opens. Now, not all models do the fender also come up, but it comes up in that backward motion. I really like it on the Ford generation. Check out the rest of this car. I really like, here's a ZR1 tip. Now, if you're wondering how do you differentiate a ZR1 from a standard Corvette, 
this is one of those tips right here. This lower sill panel is actually a little bit curved down, a little bit lower on the ZR1 compared to a standard Corvette of its time. Another thing I would like Chris to show you is also that side vent there. That's another thing that is a Corvette trademark. And over the years, it's always been there, but it's been changed from time to time. I really like how, how Chevrolet kept that with the Corvette. Look at the interior. This interior is spotless, especially with the light gray color. Uh, you would think it would show wear more, but it really doesn't. Six-speed manual transmission. That's the only way to get this car. I really like how back then uh, Chevrolet had tons of gauges um, right in front of the steering wheel for you, uh, the tachometer, and then you have an actual digital speedometer in the center. Very, very nicely done. Here's another tip. If we're looking at ZR1s, check out this rear wheel. If you notice, obviously it's the same design as the front wheel, but you see how it's deeper? The reason why this wheel has, is deeper is because the wheel is wider. This car had massive 315s on the back. And I know 315 today might not sound like a big deal because there's a lot of other cars that have bigger, but back in the 90s, that was huge. And that was only available on the ZR1 Corvette. Another thing, if you're wondering, is this a ZR1? The third brake light. Here's a little, little history lesson for you. Third brake light, the first year that it ever came out on a Corvette was 1986. That's because the Department of Transportation made it mandated. On a 1995 Corvette, standard one, they have it mounted right above the Corvette badging. On a ZR1, because the rear end is wider, this is a different tail, they mounted it up top on the roof. And I've always liked how this glass panel opens up. It gives you lots of accessibility. And that's one thing, even with the newer Corvettes, you could go shopping and you could actually put a ton of stuff in the back. Very, very nice touch. Here's the last part of it. Another little tip. You see these black marks on each side, the black plastic here? That's only on a ZR1. The reason why is, is because the tail is actually wider. And I don't know if Chris could show you the tires. Those are those 315 ultra wide tires. This ZR1 even has the stock exhaust on it. So this owner wound up finding such a wonderful car. To wrap it off, now you could go and buy one of these and stick it on, but this is an original. There's another ZR1 emblem back here to let you know that this is something special, but there are people that went out and bought these aftermarket and stuck it on their car, even though it wasn't a ZR1. But hopefully you remember the things I pointed out to you. So then if you see one, you know if it's real or if somebody just put some type of emblem on the back. To wrap it off, let's go to the front of the car and finish it off. I definitely want to take another look at this engine. I'm telling you, when you see this engine in person, it just draws your attention. And I really like what Chevrolet did. Now, believe it or not, Chevrolet did not design this engine. The two companies that were related to this engine was Lotus and Mercury Marine. Yes, Mercury Marine, the people that make boat engines. So there's a lot of other companies that were involved because this was new for General Motors. There was never an overhead cam V8 in a Corvette. So what they decided to do is turn to some people that had some experience in that. And that's okay. As you can see, another ZR1 emblem on the side. Now this is something that they, uh, that they, people could put. Uh, one thing that I do like that is added is this extra stripe here. That is something, it really makes it to where you could see the bulge in the hood. And that's another thing I like about these Corvettes is that the hood is massive, but I like the raised portion of it. it gives it a very nice touch. And then finally, this is the standard front end back from 1995. There's no difference between this and a standard Corvette. Um, this design came out in 1991 where they went to a rounded front and then a rounded rear on all Corvette models. The ZR1, though, in 1990 was the first to have a round, uh, rounded tail. But anyways, if you like Corvettes and you like these kinds of cars, leave a comment in that comment section. If you have not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm so grateful to have over 4,000 subscribers. Thank you for watching. Check out my website, RadiesRise.com, my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all original content all the time. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.